Hello, welcome to PC Mag Live. I'm Dan Costa. He is Sasha Segan, and we have a great show for you today. We're going to answer some of your reader questions. We're going to talk about the top tech news of the day, and we're going to pull one cool thing off the shelf and show it to you live on air. But first, I want to tell you that this show is brought to you by Intel, which invites you to check out its new pop-up Intel Experience Store in New York City. This unique, ever-changing environment provides an opportunity to get your hands on some of the latest Intel-based tablets and two-in-one devices. You can even test drive some of them by taking them home for a 24-hour period, enabling you to try before you buy. You can catch the Intel Experience Store at 262 Mott Street in Nolita, open now through January 25th. For more information, you can go to intel.com slash stores. Now, the top tech news of the day, it's been on almost every website, it's been on our website, which is that the Mac Pro, Apple's Mac Pro, its new super cool desktop is going on sale tomorrow, Turns out not true. Well, it's kind of going on sale tomorrow. First of all, the the what I think of as the world's most expensive simple human trash can uh, is uh, going on because it's of, shaped like a trash can. Exactly, it's going on basically pre-order mm. tomorrow. Tomorrow, you're going to be able to put down your money, and Apple will charge your credit card, and sometime soon, you will receive a uh, very expensive black cylinder of Xeon processors. Yeah, and they're going to sell out. I mean, I think uh, it's pretty clear. It's pretty clear that they're. I mean, for for a desktop, this is probably the most anticipated desktop system in the last year, in the last two years. Well, it's super hyped. I mean, the thing about this Mac Pro is it has such a saga behind it. The Mac Pro was for many years the creative industry's standard machine. And then for a long time, it wasn't updated. And all of these creative professionals were very angry, and they said, where is our Mac Pro? They're angry anyways. They're just right. angry people. And then Apple said, it's coming, it's coming, and they teased this computer for so long that the built-up demand for this Mac Pro is just huge. Yeah, and basically, if you work with creative professionals, anyone who edits video, anyone who edits photos, anybody who does some high-end media work, they're all going to want this system. The prices are not cheap. They start at $3,000. You trick it all out. It, the price goes up to $4,000, to $4, $5,000. It is not a, uh, it's not for the average user. I'm sure you could configure a $12,000 Mac Pro. Yeah, it's going to be, and we should. We should. We should, and we should get it into the lab, and we should benchmark it. Looking forward to that. We'll find out more tomorrow for sure. But uh, also in the news, the news that Bitcoin has dropped to $480, which is... Its high was somewhere up at twelve twenty four. Um, it, so it's it's a huge, huge drop in price. Well, this is why Bitcoin is useless as a currency. This is why Bitcoin is a speculative investment vehicle, and that's because a currency to be functional needs to ha be a relatively consistent holder of value. You need to be able to project into the future what you'll be able to buy with your amount of currency. Uh, you need to be able to plan and use it as a, a way to trade this currency for objects. Bitcoin is not that. Bitcoin is, it's a gamble, it's a it's casino a, it's game. It's a commodity, it's a lot like, it's a, I, I liken it to gold. It's like yeah. owning gold. You can buy things with gold, you can buy things with Bitcoins, but the price is gonna fluctuate, it's continued on a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. And the reason that this, this huge price drop happened in Bitcoin is because the Chinese government is cracking down on Bitcoin sales and not allowing their national bank to actually transact in Bitcoin, and that's what set off this panic. Well, they're, yeah, they're not allowing uh, Chinese, Bitcoin, uh, Chinese Bitcoin exchanges to receive deposits in Yuan which is the Chinese national currency, because China tries to prevent people from taking money out of the country, and they're thinking that by transferring money into Bitcoin, uh, people will then later transfer the Bitcoin back to a different currency and evade these government currency controls. So Bitcoin wants to be, you know, sort of, uh, sort of so cerebral and outside the realm of governments and about liberty for government from government, but that's just not happening. No, it'll be interesting. It is definitely a gamble, and you should know that before you get involved with it. Uh, also in the news, that Google has announced it's going to update the Google Glass firmware product that we have mixed feelings about. I'm trying um, to make it work right now. That's not working. Now, you were always there was an app that let you wink and take photos. Google has now incorporated that functionality into the operating system itself and will allow you to take photos and videos simply by winking. and actually opens up the opportunity for the wink to be to control all sorts of different things in the operating system. Yeah, I mean, superficially, you can talk about the creepster aspect of this where people can now take pictures of other people uh, anytime they want with this really not noticeable gesture. But they're wearing Google Glass. I think yeah. that's pretty noticeable. Exactly. And if you're wearing Google Glass, you're doing that with their cell phones. Automatically a creepster. But, uh, but the, the important thing here is that we're trying to create a new library or language of gestures and interactions for these head-mounted devices. Like, we know what to do with buttons. We know what to do with touch screens. But when all we can use are our eyes and our heads and occasionally... And, and voice commands. Yeah, and occasionally our mouths. 
what is the form of interaction that's going to grow up here? And so, uh, yeah, Wink is going to have to be one of those interactions that makes these heads-up displays work. Yeah, it's a very interesting thing. It's actually one of the things I've struggled with in using Glass is that there is, I, I still crave a keyboard. I, I crave some kind of input. I crave a menu system that I can easily navigate. It's hard for me to get used to just voice controls and a little bit of light tapping. So the Wink, I think it's, I think the, capturing a picture with a Wink is the small story. The big story is being able to just, it's to develop this new wearable interface, which I think this is a step forward. Let's talk about reader questions. We got a reader question from Neil via email, and Neil wants to know if his Moto X's dialer how to get his Moto X dialer to show all of his contacts by default rather than his favorites. Well then, uh, Neil's lucky because uh, the Moto X is actually my phone, which I use on a daily basis. And what's interesting is that in his email he said he was coming from a Samsung phone over to a Motorola phone. And this is one of the things about Android, which is that every manufacturer kind of has a different interface. And uh, in the case of the Motorola phones, there is a search box at the top of the default dialer screen where you can type in any name of any contact or any phone number, and then it'll dial that phone number. Or you can drag the little phone icon out of the bottom bar and then go into your apps, get the people icon, and drag that into the bottom bar. And then you automatically go to all contacts. This is another thing about Android, which is that it's so configurable. You can usually make it do what you want it to do. Uh, you can usually make it do anything in any style that you are. Yeah, but, but you need a, you need an Android expert to actually tell you how to do that. Yeah. Um, that's the thing that Apple users would argue is that they don't need an expert to tell them on a podcast how to sort their contacts. But I'm just I'm an Android guy too. I'm just <laughs> it's a fair point. It's a fair point. All right, let's move on to one cool thing. Every day, we test thousands of products here at PC Mag Labs in New York City. Every day we take one thing off the shelf and show it to you live. Today we actually have Samara Lin down at the Intel Experience store pulling one thing off their shelf and showing it to you live. Uh, Samara, what do you got for us today? Hey guys, thanks. Yeah, I'm back here at Intel's pop-up store here in downtown Manhattan. And our one cool thing of the day is this HP Split X2. Now this is really cool because you can operate it in two ways. You can operate it as a clamshell laptop or as a slate tablet. And over here we have it uh, attached to its keyboard base and this is how it looks in uh, its two parts. What blows me away about this device is that it has an 128 gig SSD drive built into the display. Now you can get it with an optional 500 gig regular spinning hard drive that's built into the keyboard base. So what you can do is you use the SSD drive to boot off uh, from for performance and then you have the optional storage uh, in this keyboard base. Uh, you can order it in a Core i3 or a Core i5 processor and it has an 8 megapixel rear camera and also a 1080p high definition webcam. So come on down to 262 Mott Street. You can take the uh, Split X2 for a test drive and uh, check it out for yourself. Intel also has pop-up stores in uh, LA and Chicago. So if you're in those cities, go ahead and give them a visit. And that's our one cool thing for the day. And back to you guys. Thanks for that report, Samara. That's a great looking product. And that has been PC Mag Live for today. We remind you to send us your questions via Facebook, on Twitter, via email. We will answer them live on air. And tune in tomorrow. We'll have a brand new show for you. Thanks for joining us.